Hi, welcome to How to Repair. In today's video, I'm going to be dismantling one of the last great Bosch Classic machines. This is a Bosch Classic. They did it in 6 kilo, 7 kilo and 8 kilo machines, I believe. This is manufactured 8 to 10 years ago and was one of the greatest machines about at the time. They put a lot of thought into the way the cabinet was assembled. They put a lot of thought into the whole design. There was a few flaws with the machine, and this is one of the flaws that I'm going to show you now before we dismantle the machine. In this video, you will not only be getting how to dismantle the machine, I will be going through any common problems that occur on the machine to actually help you repair your existing machine. I will also be dismantling the machine for all the components because the machine is in perfect working condition apart from one item, the drum and spider. Now, originally the drum and spider were only sold as a complete unit. And what has happened on this machine is the spider has cracked. There's an aluminium spider and because of either water conditions, age or just corrosion from electrolysis, this spider has gained a hairline crack in it. This means that when it goes on to high spin, the inner drum is hitting the outer drum, causing a horrendous noise, which you will hear in a minute. Now, the uh, machine itself was very well built, good program, good working components, a few little repairs that may have needed to be done over the years, carbon brushes, blocked pumps, leaks on door seals and so on, but the machine was easy to work on. But as you can see now, the machine is running at approximately 400 RPM and it's quite quiet. But as we go to a higher spin RPM, the noise will become horrendous. This is because the aluminium spider has now broken and as I said, the inner drum is hitting the outer drum. So in this tutorial I'll be going through how to dismantle the machine, how to change the drum. I've done a previous video on how to replace the bearings on these machines a few years ago and how to replace the carbon brushes, the pump and all other faults. But this video is going to be used as a dismantling video so you can see how the machine is put together. Now we're just coming up to about five, 600 RPM and the noise is starting. You can just hear it little bit of suspension noise but now we're getting the drum noise and this gets louder and louder as it goes up to 1200 rpm the noise is absolutely ridiculous and i'm having to speak louder and louder because of it so not to do any damage to the machine because all the components are good on the machine we're now going to dismantle the machine we'll go round to the back disconnect the electricity the water and then we're going to take the motor out first and the belt Okay, we've disconnected the machine from the water and the electric and we're going to remove the back panel. One screw at the bottom. And the lid. Two screws. Tap the lid backwards and the lid will come away. To remove the belt is simple. We just need to hold the belt and pull it towards you. Putting the belt on is also an easy process. You need to slot it over the motor pulley wheel, put the belt onto the wheel and rotate to put the belt on. Then you're able to line the belt up on the actual pulley. For ease, for ease of filming, I've actually taken the machine over onto its front onto a towel. There is a cable tie that you need to undo. This will then release the wiring harness for the motor. The motors on these machines are a six pin motor and you have six wires. Two go to the windings, two go to the taco and two go to the carbon brushes. There is another video on how to test these motors and how to replace the carbon brushes. Then it's a 10 mil nut on both sides of the motor. These motors are very good motors. They've got carbon brushes in each side. I've done a detailed video on testing these motors as well. Uh, and also with regards to the thermal cutout that's built into the motor that sometimes can become faulty. Uh, as you can see, there's some carbon deposit on here. All I need to do with this motor now is check the carbon brushes and this is a perfectly good motor for someone to buy. First, we're going to remove the soap door. Slide it out, press the button down and the soap door will come away. I'm actually going to take the door and the hinge off as one unit. The reason being is it'll make it lighter 
Not while I take the front panel off. Undo the two screws. The hinge will come upwards and the whole door assembly will come away. Next I'm going to remove the kick strip and the pump flap. Press the button down, the flap will come away. There's one screw hidden inside. This slides sideways and comes off. I won't be selling this as it has a couple of broken lugs on it. Next we're going to remove the facial panel and the program, the control board that actually controls the machine. This is a Torx 10 screw in the side and the other screws and the other screws are Torx 20. Once these are undone, use a screwdriver just to unclip the panel. At this point I'm going to remove the top tension bar because we are going to be taking the drum out of the machine. Now we're going to remove the outer lip off the door seal. Using a small screwdriver or hook, lift the spring and the band will come away. The seal then can be taken off the front panel and folded inside. Next we're going to remove the door interlock. Now on early models of this it had two screws but this type is the one which has the plastic clips that push in Once they're pushed in, slide the lock in this direction, tilt it at a 45 degree angle and slot it backwards. Next we're going to remove the front panel of the washing machine. I think there's only two screws on the bottom that hold the panel in place, but I can see four screws and I'm going to remove all of them. The panel lifts up, down and will come away. You need to undo the clip on the wiring harness. This is the clip and you just need to press this backwards and it will come off the panel. If you had a problem with one of your Bosch Neff or Siemens washing machine and it would not start then it may be the door lock that actually became faulty. To replace the door lock follow the procedure that I did. There's a little clip here that you press and the wiring harness will come away and you would be able to replace that lock. This lock is perfectly good and can be reused. OK, now we come to the heating system. The first thing I want to explain is the three errors that can occur if the heating system is not working correctly. Number one is the appliance is tripping the electricity supply. This can be the heater, especially if something like the bearings had collapsed on the machine and damaged the heater in any way. If the heater may have gone open circuit, meaning it's unable to heat the water, this could also cause an error on the machine and you can see all about the error codes in another video that we have on the website. And thirdly is the machine may be overheating the water and this could be a problem with the NTC sensor. I'm quickly going to show you how to test these. Firstly to test the heating element, take the two wires off the heating element, turn your meter to a low range, I've got it set at 200, turn the meter on. Testing continuity across the meter, we can see we've got an ohms resistance of 26.2, 26.3. This is a 2000 watt element. Now using the Ohm's Law calculator, following the link in the description, you would be able to analyse the a resistance value to work out that the wattage was actually 20, uh, 2000 watt using the 26 uh, ohms resistance. Now if you had the appliance tripping the electricity supply then you would need a different meter. This is called a mega or an insulation tester or sometimes known as a pack tester and you would be actually be checking that the resistance in the element is not going to earth above a certain standard. In the UK for example it's 30 milliamp.
Now, the NTC sensor is what tells the circuit board what temperature the machine is at. Now, at a set value, we've got a room temperature at the moment of approximately about 18 to 20 degrees. Turning the meter up to 20K resistance, I would be able now to go across the two terminals to get a resistance value. And they're quite tricky to get on, but I have a resistance value of 6,650. Although the meter is showing 665, that is actually 6,650. As the temperature changes, in other words, the water is getting hotter in the machine, the resistance value will drop. And this is what tells the circuit board when to send power to the heating element. On the circuit board, you have complex circuits which will actually be getting the resistance value from the NTC sensor, then activating a relay on the circuit board, which allows 230 or 240 volts, depending on where you are in the world, to go to the element. And this is how the element is turned on to raise the temperature of water in the machine. To remove the heating element is straightforward. 10 mil nut, undo it all the way until the end of the thread. Then knock it inwards. And that is quite tight. And I'm going to have to use a hammer to knock it back inwards. This releases the pressure off the seal that keeps it watertight. Now, using either a flat blade screwdriver or a hook, these elements are notorious at being stuck in, and hopefully this will come away easily. And there you go, it comes out. Now, what I'm looking for here is any damage. That's all calcium on there. And I'm just making sure that the heater element has not been touched by the drum and there is no signs of it touching. So that's a perfectly good element because I know it does not trip the electricity supply here. If your washing machine is not emptying in the allocated period of time, you may have one of a couple of faults. You may have a blockage inside the pump. This is it behind the filter here. Uh, you may also have a problem with no power getting to the pump or the pump has gone open circuit and you need to remove the filter to inspect inside here. I'll bring this up to a camera for you in a minute once I've removed it. Next, you may have a small item of clothing blocking the sump hose or possibly a buildup inside the ball area. There's an anti-siphon ball in here, which is designed to keep the uh, detergent inside the drum. I have even come across a five pence piece uh, and small European coins blocking the sump hose, uh, the waste hose coming from the machine. And another item that can cause problems is if you have got your waste hose connected to a sink unit, you may have a restriction in the sink unit itself, stopping the machine from emptying the water in the allocated period of time. Also, you may have no power going to the pump or the pump is open circuit. Anyway, to remove the pump, just take off the electrics. Then we need to undo two hose clips, one from the waste hose, just press it down, lift it up, and then you'll be able to remove that. Then we're able to do the sump hose clip, again pressing it down, moving it off the pump, and rotating it. You see here, there's a prime example, a piece of calcium has, because the machine has been banging around, a piece of calcium has gone into the pump. And this is just calcium that has built up. That could stop the flow of water leaving the machine, therefore causing a problem where the machine is unable to empty in the allocated period of time. Once you've taken these hoses off, you'll know there's a screw at the bottom. There may be multiple screws, depending on your model. Undo this screw, it's a Torx 20. Then grab hold of the pump, and it will lift slightly and come away. Now, I promised to show you the impeller, so let me just quickly take this off, bring this up to the camera, and I hope you can see in there. 
and the impeller turns and it's a magnetic pump. This means that it's got resistance on the pump and it feels notchy, but it's not. That's just the normal action of the pump. Uh, on earlier models, they just had an AC pump, which was very free and that would turn automatically. This is an AC pump, but it's a magnetic motor pump. And that means that it's got three points on when it catches the magnets and becomes clunky. But that's a perfectly good pump. Now we'll remove the sopo, uh, sump hose. To remove the sump hose, the first thing you want to do is you can either undo this clip here or you can actually undo the pressure bowl. Now the pressure bowl here is attached to the hose. This then goes up a small hose to the actual pressure switch. And if this fills up with sludge over a period of time, it can cause problems with the pressure switch, not telling the machine what water level is at. And when we come to the pressure switch, I'll explain all the faults. So just pressing the clip down at the back, I'm able to loosen that away. Then I can use a torque 20 on the screw, undo the screw until it's nice and loose, and then I can drop the hose down and pull this away. And in here you can see calcium again, which has come off the machine because it's been shaking very badly. And inside here, if I just take this apart for you, is the anti-siphon ball and in this area it can actually build up with clothing, fabric, all sorts of things like plastic left in pockets and so on and this can cause problems with the machine not being able to empty in the allocated period of time but that's a very good sump hose for someone in the future. Next I'm quickly going to take the front panel retention bar off because I want to take this off so I can remove the soap drawer and also the soap hose. Next I'm going to be lifting the machine off the workbench down to ground level so you can actually see how the hoses come off and the control panel. But before I do this I'm going to remove the two bolts on either side that hold the suspension legs in place. This will allow me to remove the drum later. 13 mil and just undo them. Once undone, remove the bolt completely. I'll do that on the other side. Okay, at this point I'm going to actually remove the wiring from the circuit board and I'll just explain how to do this. There is a cable tie that you need to cut. This will release the electrics and then there are lugs to release the wiring. You will need to do this and then there are clips. Some are easy to get at to pull off. Others you have to lean backwards that's the one going to the motor. Lean this over and you've got a clip. These are quite small clips so it's handy to have a very small screwdriver just to lift them up while you pull these out. And remember if you are replacing a circuit board it's a good idea to always actually take a photograph of the wiring and the locations before you take it apart. As you see here, there are multiple points where the actual uh, wires can go, depending on the model of machine. But if you look closely, there are location lugs, meaning that these cables can only go in one way. But some people have forced them in in the past to the wrong location. Again, using the small screwdriver, press down, release each clip. And there we go. We have a perfectly good circuit board now. These circuit boards for the Bosch machines were over £200 to buy and for the Siemens and Neff even more expensive. This is a perfectly good program that can be used on someone else's machine. Now I'll explain a bit more about this but to release the pressure switch, little pin at the top, that then can lift and come away. I'm going to take the whole pipe off and disconnect the wiring. Again, make sure you take photos if replacing anything. And I've got the pressure bowl here, and that connects to the pressure switch. Let me take you through the basic water system. Your machine may be filling with water overnight, 
and this can be two things that can be happening. One is you have a defective water valve, which is quite common. In other words, grit has got into the back of the valve, and I'll be showing you that in a minute. Or you may have water back feeding into the machine because you've got it connected to the sink unit. And sometimes when you let the sink water go, water runs back into the machine because the pipes have not been fitted correctly. On other occasions when the machine is on, you have your pressure switch. This is connected to the pressure bowl by a pipe. This pipe sometimes can get damaged. We can see some marks on here where it has been chaffing against the side of the drum. The pressure bowl might have sludge in it, giving a false reading to the pressure switch. And the pressure switch is basically a mechanical item, and I believe this one is mechanical and electronic as well, meaning that it's got a couple of different levels that it indicates when how much water is in the drum. Now, you'll see adjustment screws here, which have been sealed by the manufacturer. Now, if I blow into this, I should hear a click or maybe two clicks, depending on the type of pressure switch that this is. And I haven't got the stomatics on this. That's got one visible click. That means there's a set of points inside there which open at a certain level to shut the power off to the water valves. The electronic side may be a sensor that detects how much water is in the machine, allowing the machine to do a wash cycle or a rinse cycle, for example, which would be different water levels. Okay, next we're going to be removing the water valve, but first I want to take the soap box out and the soap hose. So I'm going to use pin nose pliers on the hose press down the clips and release them. I'm then going to ease the pipes backwards and sometimes because these have been on there a long time they can be tricky to get off. To remove the soap hose from the box use a pair of grips or you can use special uh, clip grips. Release it. You'll notice there's a small mark in the actual hose which lines up on that piece there and then we're able to remove the soap box. Again, to remove the soap hose, just going to adjust my clips, my adjust spanner, sorry. Press the clip, take it off, and then we can remove the hose. That's in perfectly good condition. Now we've got clean access to the water valve. Okay, to remove the water valve, just press the pin to hold the wiring and lift it upwards. Now, getting the water valve out can be a bit tricky. If you look closely at the back of the water valve, which I'll show you in more detail in a second, there is a bit of a lip. Now, if you get a flat blade screwdriver or a item just to lift up the plastic and then pushing it downwards, and they are quite stiff, and I will tell you to protect your hands from these sharp edges. Once you've lifted it up, it will come away. This is the piece that I'm talking about you need to lift up because it's got a locking ridge on it. Now, in the back of the water valve, if I get a pair of pin nose pliers, there is a filter. And if you hold it with the pin nose pliers, you're able to remove the filter and clean it. If you are on well water in some parts of the world that people are on well water, uh, or they've done work in the street, or you've done work in the house, Dirt can actually get into the water system, therefore blocking this filter. If dirt gets through to the water valve itself, then this also can cause a problem. Now this water valve is a three wire connection. This does not necessarily mean that it's only got three wires going to the valve. One is a neutral that goes to both of the valves and the other is the live for one water valve and a live for the other water valve. There is a detailed video at the website showing you how water valves work and how to test them. Next, we'll quickly take off the electrical connection for this machine and the electrical filter or suppressor. There's two screws at the back which are torque 20. Just undo the two screws from the filter. This is the filter down here. Once these are undone, the filter will lift up and come away. Then we're able to take the wiring off. Some of these spade connectors will have clips on them. There is one here with a clip. You need to press the clip down on the earth while pulling to release it. The other one hasn't got 
a clip on it and that is a perfectly good suppressor or electrical filter sometimes these can split over age and cause electrical tripping uh, these are designed to just filter out the electricity to stop any interference with TVs radios and other appliances in the household the cable is also able to come out now that just lifts up and comes away and so many people have actually damaged cables in the past but I do sell them occasionally as well now before I lift the drum out of the machine um, first thing sorry I forgot about this uh, to show you how to remove the door seal find the join on the spring using a small screwdriver lift the spring up and that comes away and be careful of your eyes that nearly got me and then the seal will lift up and pull away that is a very good seal for someone as it's still in excellent condition and it has no damage to it at all now we'll undo the forward concrete block and the one at the top 13 mil bolts on this and then I'm able to lift the concrete block away and also slide out the two holders and then the wire band will come away the screws are torque 20 and there's only three this then releases the concrete block and you may need to prise it off the plastic so again using my lever this then comes away okay now we're ready to take the drum out I'm going to leave the retention bar on but I'm going to undo this from the cabinet now I've got now I've got a strap that I put onto the two springs and I'm very lucky that I have a travel hoist and that is the drum out of the machine now I'm going to quickly off camera split this drum because not only do I need to split it to gain access to the two suspension legs I also need to take the hose and the wiring off the cabinet as well because that can all be reused but I want to show you the damage that was actually done to this spider and before I do that I'm quickly going to show you how to take the hose off there's a couple of little plastic clips that you need to press in and then this top one comes out you can take the clip off and there we have a perfectly good genuine hose I've taken the machine upside down just to quickly undo the feet you wouldn't believe the amount of people that lose feet when moving house and that's a perfectly good set of feet wiring loom And there we have a complete wiring loom I have done a detailed video on how these drums come apart firstly you have screws all the way around then I'm going to have to split the drum you see these plastic lugs that are the clips that hold it in place these are designed for a one fit but if you see my previous video a couple of years ago now on how to replace the bearings you are able to cut these off and then insert a couple of an additional screws with the bearing assembly there's about 20 of these plastic bits that you have to break before you're able to split the drum here's the drum and this drum looks like it would need re uh, replacing anyway because if I show you you can see that the drum now has got damaged and it's got a slight uh, non-circular movement there's a bit of oval in it 
and this is most probably because the spider's gone so many times and it was this edge that would have been hitting the actual cabinet and because you can see there's no calcium on here you can see where it was rubbing. I just have to rotate this over now and take off the pulley wheel These bolts are held in with Loctite on the pulley wheel. No, there was no Loctite on that one. Pulley wheel comes away. That's also a useful part. The drum can go over. Knock the bearings out. And here you can see the spider broken. And there you go, another machine slightly saved from the landfill, saving you money in the process on buying your parts and helping us make a difference to this planet. By you buying used parts on occasions, it is not only good for the environment, it's saving you money. We sell new and used spares because you can't replace carbon brushes, for example, with second-hand ones, and a hole in the door seal you wouldn't be able to replace with an old one unless it was in perfect working condition, as this one is. But do remember, by you saving money, you are helping the environment, which is the most important thing I'm trying to get across. Manufacturers are building in so much obsolescence nowadays, it is absolutely ridiculous. All they care about is the consumption of appliances on the marketplace. There's links in the description below to additional videos to assist you with replacing pumps, heaters, bearings, etc, etc. And there's also exploded diagrams on this web page to show you all the parts that are available for this machine. Thanks very much indeed for watching. I hope you found it helpful. And remember, you can always click on the Bipolar Beer page if we helped you a lot. Thanks again for watching.